So, let's go ahead and proceed. That was part A. Over there. For part B, I'm going to say, <clears throat> firstly, when y equals 1 on, sorry, 1 minus x, right, it's going to intersect with half x plus 1 once. Okay. So, I'm just going to solve for these together. 1 minus x equals half x plus 1. Let's have a look here. Um, I guess I actually already know what this is. It's x equals 0. Okay. Um, you can see that the graph confirms it for you. Do you see what I did, by the way? I subtracted 1 from both sides, which left me with no constant. And then I actually don't care how many x's you've got. You can have half an x, 3 quarters of an x, 15x. If it's equal to 0, x is 0. Right? And my graph kind of already clued me into that fact because there's the origin, right? So there's one solution. How am I going to find the other? What am I going to put together? Hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay, so I can substitute this in to either of those equations, and I'm going to get a y value out, because I need coordinates, don't I, to get the solution. So you can see off the graph, in fact, and you can see here as well, you're going to get a nice, easy y like coordinate of 1. Okay. Alright, now to find the other point of intersection, to find the other point of intersection, I used this line first with this one. Which ones am I going to combine this time? Yeah, it's, it's these two, right? They're going to intersect here, wherever that happens to be. Okay? So I'm going to, instead of using 1 minus x, I've dealt with that one. There are no more points of intersection. I'm going to deal with x minus 1 and the same half x plus 1 branch that I've dealt with before. Okay? So x minus 1 equals this. I have to be a little more careful this time. Uh, I'll subtract half x from both sides. Now what would I going to do? Hold on a second. I think I already have. If I added, if I subtracted half x from both sides, that's gone now. And it's come over here. I think I can add one to both sides, right? That'll get all the constants over on one side, like so. And now all I have to do is multiply through, right? Uh, multiply through by two. Done. Uh, in the same way as before, I should pop that in to get a y coordinate. Y equals. Let's see. X equals four. Y is going to be. 3, right? Done. So I have my two points of intersection and I'm home. Okay. Now I should point out, even though what I did was I graphed and then I said, okay, how do I use that to solve? All I really needed was this bit and this bit. Can you see why? Can you see why? Get it? See what I did there? Never mind. Um, look at the original equation. Look at the original equation. Does the original equation have any y's in it? Answer, no. I introduced those so I could successfully graph, right? Because I know it's a two-dimensional thing. If the original question only has to do with x, then I only really need x's as my solutions. And these guys just kind of come along for the ride. They're not necessary. They just help me understand what's going on. Okay. All right. Now... Just before I finish, we've done this graphically, okay? It's not the only way to do it. You can do this purely algebraically, but it's quite time consuming. Here is why. Think about this, um, if you want, you can draw this off on the side or write it off on the side. Think about how you would solve this if you did not have a picture, right? You'd have to go back, and rather than sort of skipping all the algebra by using a drawing, you'd have to go back to your algebraic definitions, right? So you'd have to come back to this and say, okay, sometimes this guy is equal to x minus 1, and sometimes it's equal to 1 minus x, yeah? In the same way, you'd have to say sometimes this guy is equal to half x plus 1, sometimes it's equal to negative a half x minus 1, and then you have to try all the combinations. How many combinations are there? Hmm. Well, it looks to me like, I'm actually going to write these out. The first combination is x minus 1, this positive 1, and this one, this positive 1. There's the first combination, right? Give me another one. x minus 1 and negative half. Okay, I'll try the other case for this guy. All right, give me another one. Anyone? 
Have a look. What have I dealt with so far? Yeah, I've, I've dealt with both of these versions. Now I should try the 1 minus x version uh, with the positive. And there's one last case, which is minus x, that one, and negative half x minus 1. Okay. Now, there are four cases, except I want you to look really carefully at case 1 and case 4. Can you look at those for a second? What do you notice about them? Do you notice, if you wanted to, there's no really reason to, but you can, you can go straight from case 1 to case 4. Solving case 1 solves case 4. Do you see why? What is it that they share in common? Or maybe, how do I get from case 1 to case 4? What has to be done to both sides? Eric? Multiply by negative. Yeah. And that shouldn't surprise us because this left-hand side is the negative version of this. And this ne negative left hand, right hand side is the negative version of that, right? So they're actually parallel. So therefore, you don't have to worry about this case. There's another case you don't have to worry about. Can you see which one it is? This time, maybe you can actually use this guy to your advantage. Can you see which case can be ignored? I think we can ignore case two. We are at a bit of an advantage because we've already solved this question. Case one is this one. See that? That's, I literally have written it just there. Case three is the first one I started with. Okay. Now, why can I ignore case two? Well, because I can see from the graph, okay? except when you haven't drawn a graph, you don't know that yet. So watch what happens. This is actually important. Follow with me what happens if we go ahead and solve this weirdo case 2 that we're supposed to ignore. Okay? Um, what should I do to both sides? How would you like me to solve this? Add one. I can add 1 to both sides. So that's going to get rid of those two guys there. Okay? And then what do you get left with? X. What do you get? Hold on a second, look carefully. Oh, okay, you, you've just, um, yeah, you, haven't, yeah, you haven't done anything from there. Yes, now what do I do? Where do I go? I guess an, I can add half x to both sides. That gives me 3 on 2 x equals 0. So, wait a second. What if, what's happened? What have I got? I already dealt with this, haven't I? I already found a solution for this, okay? So it's kind of like, ah, uh, what was the point? There was no, there was no, no gain from doing that. Having done these two, I know I'll get the two solutions that I want. Okay. There's one other thing that can happen. Sometimes you don't get a solution you already have. Occasionally, you get a solution like, say, I don't know. As an example, you might get something like this. Okay. Now, can anyone see, have a look at the graph. Why might that be a problem? Why might that be a problem? Mm, yeah, Eric. Absolute value, so the graph doesn't go below zero. Okay, now hold on a second. I'll take this idea, but I'm going to push on it a little bit. It's true, we're looking at an absolute value problem, so we shouldn't have any negative things down here. Okay? However, x, sorry, let me rewind, meaning things down here, that's y values, right? Vertical stuff. So y can't be negative. x can be negative, though, right? Like I actually can, in theory, get values that are on the left hand side, not on the right. That's what x equals negative 1 means. So it's true that I can't have negatives, but not that kind of negative. There's another problem with this solution. Let's see it. Hmm. Can you come back to this guy again? Negative half x minus 1. Where does he exist? Because he doesn't always exist, right? He only exists sometimes. Where have I drawn this? Go back to my graph and tell me. In what domain have I drawn it? Can you tell me? What's this, um, what's this point here? It's when x is negative, but it's not just x is negative. It's more than just negative. This value over here is negative 2. You can go ahead and check it out if you like. Go ahead and graph it and you'll see. Okay. If that's negative 2, the only place where this exists is where x is less than negative 2. It's on this side. Do you agree? 
But the solution I found isn't in that zone over there, right? So you're like, oh, it's okay. I found a solution for him. It's meant to be here, except he doesn't exist over there. I haven't drawn him, right? The absolute value of half x plus one doesn't equal that when x equals negative one. It only equals that when x is less than negative two. Okay. Now that's actually quite hard to see if all you've got is just algebra, right? Which is why the picture, which is why the drawing is so instructive and why even when you don't get asked to do it, I recommend you draw just a really rough one on your own page, just a tiny one so you can see which branches are going to intersect. You don't have to do guesswork. You can see it's going to be this one and this one and you know which one to ignore. Okay.